In this video, I'm gonna show you how to build a client portal using the power of HubSpot and custom objects and a no-code tool like Softer. Now, in previous videos, we talked about the integrations with HubSpot and how deals and companies and contacts switch over. Well, now Softer has a possibility for us to link custom objects inside of their interface, which means that any way you're using HubSpot with custom objects is going to be possible for you to build and access that information outside of HubSpot in case you might need to share this with stakeholders or perhaps you want an extended sales team who doesn't have full visibility inside of HubSpot. You're not paying for seats in HubSpot, but you want them to be able to see the information. In this case, I'm gonna show you what this looks like with a real estate example where they have leasing agents looking at specific property information, but you could use this for distributors who happen to have different companies selling their product. You might use this when you have different types of reps, whether it's 1099s, where they're not actually in your HubSpot. So lots of use cases. So to set up the client portal for this real estate example, the first thing we're gonna to need to do is make sure that our custom objects are set up in HubSpot. So first here, you'll see that we've got a properties custom object, not to be confused with properties in HubSpot, but in this case, we're looking at the properties that this real estate company has, and each property has its own object in HubSpot. So if you're unfamiliar with custom objects, that's gonna be here back in the settings. You do have to have a specific license to get access to custom objects. So here we're gonna pull down our custom object that we created and it is properties. So we've got the information we need inside of HubSpot. I went ahead and actually went to a view where you can see the 12 properties that we have listed. We have the names, we have the different types, the cost per square foot, so on and so forth. So this information here is what we're going to populate over into a leasing agents portal that we're building in Softer. And the beauty of that there is, let's say we have 25 different agents that wanna know what's available and we wanna be able to actually use HubSpot to manage, is it leased, is it not leased? We're gonna run our billing through this, but we need the leasing folks to know real time information about the listings that are here. So the first thing we're gonna do is when we go to software, we're gonna make sure that our data sources are connected. And you'll notice that here I've got my data sources connected. We're also going to showcase how we can use other data sources inside the client portal like Google Sheets. But here we've got our HubSpot demo account set up as well. So making sure that's done, we're gonna go back to our apps area. I've already built somewhat of our property management portal, but I'm gonna walk you through the steps that you'd need to take uh, the next step here if you're starting from scratch. So let's go ahead and jump to start from scratch. But before we do that, we wanna make sure we know what pages we're wanting to build out because you can get into the application and then kind of end up clicking around as you figure it out. So the first thing that I suggest you do is actually build a draft of what you might want that experience to look like. Now this isn't super overwhelming, it's not super complex, so keep that in mind, start simple, and then you can always go back and kind of build from there. But on the outskirts, so inside of Softer, you have the chance to set different permissions levels by what type of information a logged in user can see versus a not logged in user. We could also set permissions groups, which we'll go into. So on the left-hand side, I've got the pages that I would need if you're not logged in and what you see. And then I've got pages on the right-hand side of what you'll need when you are logged in. And this is the information that you can only see. Again, this is where the HubSpot information is showing. So we're not showing it to external parties without having a user and a login to view that information. So now that we've got this set, let's go back to our software studio. And if I wanted to start from scratch, it will ask me what pages I want to build. And it's gonna give you a specific set of pages to start with. This isn't all the pages that you need. So typically I go through here and figure out, yes, I want this, no, I want this. I don't really need a form, so on and so forth. And then we can create application. So once you have that created, you can create more pages that match your layout in that Lucid chart that I just showed once you get there. So now that I've already done that, let's go over to my portal that I've started building and you can see kind of what this looks like. So first of all, the pages that we just talked about get created over here and each page is going to have its own uh, properties that we're gonna look at, not to be confused with the properties inside of our HubSpot but page settings, let's call it that. So each page has its page settings. You can set the things like the name, you can actually have, if this is an external page, what is it going to be indexed in terms of SEO? Um, how is it gonna look on social? And then this is the piece that I want you to pay attention to and this is visibility. So right now we're on the homepage. Who can see this homepage? If it's a client portal, it's gonna be visible to everybody on the homepage because you want people to log in. So we've got this, who can see this page? We're gonna put all users and we're going to go ahead and save. Okay, so now you can see that that is how this works. Now, we've got two things up here at the top and these are gonna be our menus. So software is gonna give you the menu of what it looks like to a logged in user 
and a menu of what it looks like to a non-logged in user. So if you click here on the top over on the right hand side, it's going to give you the options. You can update your own image. You can go ahead and adjust a little bit of the styles and the padding and so on and so forth. So the user interface is very intuitive, very friendly. And then you've got, as you build your pages inside of the portal, you've got this option to add different types of blocks. So on the right hand side, you've got your blocks that are dynamic. So these are dynamic blocks. All of these different things here are going to be what we're pulling from our data sources. So in this case, when we're pulling HubSpot custom objects and we're pulling that over those custom objects with the property information is going to be a dynamic block. Now here on the homepage, this one features a static block. So let's say on the homepage, I didn't want to feature this. And all I want to do is feature a bunch of photos. So I could actually go to a gallery and I could feature a bunch of photos of the property with a click, you know, go ahead and create your account. That might be an option as well. Feel free to see which static module works for you. Again, if we're making a portal, the goal is to get people into the portal, not necessarily market on the homepage because that's primarily going to be the place they go to get their account. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure we have our sign up pages and our sign in pages set for the users so they can actually get into the application. Let's go to the pages. We selected those when we started setting it up and we've got sign in here. So if we click on that, this is what the sign in page will look like. So pretty standard. The only thing I really have to change here is I do want to update the image. So let's go ahead and use this asset that I've loaded. So we're going to log, uh, we'll use that. This is what the sign in page will look like. Perfect. Looks pretty good. All right, now let's go to our next page. We're going to see our sign up page. So the sign up page is going to be what it looks like when someone is setting up a new account and we're going to use this asset and there we go. So in terms of these, uh, these components here, if you wanted to actually can, uh, link this to another data source, you certainly could. We're not going to focus on that too much for this demonstration. I'm going to show you how to, uh, customize those pages on the inside. All right. So let's assume that you've done that. We've got again, other pages here. We've got a reset password, forgot password, uh, and then people can update their user profile. So let's actually build our page here of the listings of the properties. So in this case, we've got a list of the properties. I'm going to show you how I built this. So all the listings are here. So if you look at the page component over on the right hand side, it's going to ask you where the source of that information is. In this case, the source is HubSpot. So if we pull this down, it gives us all those data sources we talked about. And then the object here, since we've got lots of objects in our portal, we did choose the object of properties, which I mentioned is all those listings uh, for the specific leasing agent. So sometimes over on the right, the left hand side, we don't have the actual live data populated. So to do that, we need to click on the preview button and that will load us a preview of what this looks like with this specific data. So here we've got all the listings. Here's what we manage. And then these tags, I'll go back and show you that here in a second are driven by what types of properties. So this is actually set up back in HubSpot as well. So again, you'll notice that we have the property type here. It is a field inside of HubSpot and we can use that to actually then filter the information. So let's go to our preview. I'm going to click on any properties that are retail. And then all it's going to show me is the retail properties. That's it. There's only four. So this gives the ability for the leasing agent. Let's say that you have again, 25 different agents. They're trying to figure out what do you have that's retail and you don't want to show it on an external website and you don't want to actually put it on the homepage of your website. Um, and you don't want to give them access to HubSpot. This is going to be the way for them to find that information. Now, you can actually control these permissions on this page. If you wanted to add a record, when you add this record, it's not been configured yet. So we could actually add properties inside of this portal if we wanted to. For this specific use case, I would say probably not a good idea, but if you wanted to, that uh, functionality is there. This represents everything you see on the left-hand side. So here we've got our property name, the item fields. All of this is gonna be the stuff that's here in the middle of the page, in the middle of that specific block. So to demonstrate, let's actually put a new block in here so you can see how this comes together from scratch. So let's say we're going to do this uh, table of information here. Okay, so now we've got the table in and you'll notice that this is exactly how it loads. So on the right hand side, we're, it's assuming that it's coming from uh, Google Sheets. We're actually going to change this. We're going to have it come from our HubSpot uh, demo account. We're going to use those properties like we just mentioned. And then we've got it populated with content. And now we're going to start organizing this. So in the content tab, these are all the different columns that it lists. And here I want to go and select which specific piece of information this pulls from. Now, if this recording, there isn't a really great way to use images and HubSpot to pull them over. So we're actually going to just uh, hide this field. If we did want to do this, we could actually use images in Airtable or a different application, but we're just going to go ahead and uh, delete this specific one. All right. So our simple text is going to be the column name or the column uh, label at the top. So we're going to click into this. We're going to find the item and we're going to call this property name here and the property name gets populated. We're going to list the label as property name. 
and that's how that works. So you would go ahead and do that through the rest of the columns. And then if you wanted to get rid of these categories at the top, these are gonna be the tags that you might wanna populate. So we're not going to have tags, we're going to delete those. And then on the top search bar, you can either toggle this on, toggle this off. And then here, if we wanted to remove these tags and filtering by categories, we could actually delete this. But as you noticed in my previous example, we use the categories filtering by the type, and this is gonna be pulled directly from our custom object. And then these are the four types that are in HubSpot, again, right here that they came from, and we can use that to sort in our listing. Okay, so that's just gonna be an example. We're gonna delete that section since we already have it live. So this is going to be all of our listings here. Now, let's go back to our original page layout and we've got individual listings. So let's say we want a listing specific for the flats 250. So that would mean that they wanna go see the information specific to that property. And we can do that here. We've got a property details page uh, set up as an example as well. So you notice on this industry specific properties page, we've actually got a property name, property description. We've chosen to hide these two specific fields and then our rich text field right now is not populated from somewhere else either. So we're going to hide that. But if we had a full description of all the amenities on this property and so on and so forth in HubSpot, or if we had that in a different external source, we could link that here as well. So we're gonna go ahead and hide that for now. And then this is a static area because we're working on a property details page that we would then actually clone and add custom information in for each specific listing. So again, we might be using the data from HubSpot and then as it goes onto this page, we're adding the images and the details that are kind of like the behind the scenes pieces of the property here. Now, if you have a lot of properties, let's say you have you know 100 properties instead of 12, you may wanna power that with something more like Airtable as opposed to static uh, embedded content sections on the page. But for now, we're gonna use this block because if we click into that, this, you can actually see that we would just change our images right here within the client portal and it makes it super easy. Now, this is gonna be an example. So if we preview this, it's going to show us the information again that I showed you from HubSpot. We've got the information here at the top about the property, and then these would be the property specific photos. Now, in addition to photos for this specific property, we may also wanna show the tickets that are over in HubSpot that are maybe maintenance tickets linked to that specific property object. So in this case, we've set up a list view here that we have property tickets for this particular property. And in this case, we've got the source. We set up our source as, again, that HubSpot uh, demo account, and our object here is tickets. Now, depending on how you have your tickets set up and how they're linked to each other back in HubSpot, most likely you're gonna have a specific pipeline and then probably tags or associations with those specific properties in HubSpot so you got the right relationship. So in this case, we're going to make sure that you can see this information with conditional filters. So if the pipeline in HubSpot happens to be this specific pipeline, it shows on this particular property page. And then in this case, we could also add a ticket inside of the portal if we wanted to give permissions for the users to do that. And then this is where you would actually customize that here in this add ticket area, drop this down, and that helps you establish what record and how that's going to actually connect with the HubSpot backend. Now that dynamic, again, that's dynamic two way data updating, which I think is really fabulous because again, that's one of the beauties of just not displaying the information, but also making it possible to sync both ways again, if you want to. Now we can actually change the title and subtitle of this, but if we preview, you'll see that we have two tickets that are set up for this particular property. They're going to show the flats 250 property photos. Then if we scroll down, you'll see that we have tickets. We need to fix the toilet and the microwave's not working. So again, that's how to add that information into the portal area and pull it right from HubSpot. So we go back to pages and let's say that we go to this uh, property details page and I want to be able to show on the property details a list also of the upcoming events. So we're gonna add one more section and let's say that that section is gonna be this table here. And in the table, I'm going to include only the information from my calendar that I've synced from Google Sheets. We're gonna include property information. We're gonna include it from a sheet one. We're going to include the content and we're not gonna use an image here. Um, so we're gonna change this to text. Our content's going to be the date Label is going to be the date, and then our simple text here is going to be the details and details. Okay, and then we can actually get rid of these guys and we'll get rid of everything else here. We don't need a search bar. We're not going to have the add record button on. Let's get rid of that. And we're going to go ahead and get rid of the conditional filtering up here. Where am I going here? And there we go. Okay, so now we've got our calendar. Let's go ahead and add a title section to that. Back to our here, upcoming events. 
Okay. So now we've got our upcoming events on this specific area as well. So this means that I could actually add this to this area, or if I wanted to, I could choose to copy this over to a new page. And let's say I want to copy it over to the page that is um, just on the list itself. So I can do that. I'll go back to my page here and I've got a page of list and then I've got my calendar on there as well from upcoming events. So you can see how easy this is as you create different sections and kind of apply them back and forth, but you got to think about where your data is coming from and again, how that all comes together. Now let's jump back to our software studio and look at a couple of other pieces we need to build here. And one is going to be the users and the permissions for them to see specific parts of the data. Now this is going to be the most powerful piece of software that I think is really cool for the portal. And that is you can set up user groups or you can give permissions based on individual users. So in this case, we've got user group set up, we've got leasing group A and leasing group B. So if you go into this, you'll see that leasing group A is actually set up by an email domain level. So let's say that all of my leasing agents in this particular user group are by specific domain. So if we had a third party company that was selling for us and we only wanted them to see specific properties, they would actually just see them based on this. And then I'll show you what that means on the page level here in a second. Leasing group B, same sort of thing, set up by just the email domain level uh, filtering. Now we've also got logged in users, non-logged in users. Let's say I wanna create a super admin and the super admin is just going to be uh, here by name. And then the super admin, I'm only going to add users manually. So in this case, I only want uh, users to be added manually and we're going to click on save. Okay, so if I wanna add a user, then let's go ahead and add this user. So we're gonna click on add users without sync. I'm going to add the user email here. We're going to double check. We're not gonna do any bulk import. We're going to click on add user. And then this is going to be, we'll invite them later, but that is okay. And for user groups, we're going to go and assign her to be a super admin and that's about as easy as it is to add different users based on permissions. Now you can go in and actually have permissions at the block level. That's really advanced, but it is possible. We're not gonna show that in this video, but it is possible. Now let's go through kind of what we've built here and how this all works together from a user permission perspective. So right now I've got my listings here and we're going to go ahead and update this to what people would see in the navigation at the top when they actually have a login. All right, so this one's going to be all listings. And we're going to delete those two sublinks. And then our action is to open a page. And our page is this list. Perfect. And list number two, let's say list number two is the visit user. Or like update user. Let's do that. I'm going to add an action. And we're going to open a page, user profile, and that's it. Okay, so we've got all listings and update user. Again, this is gonna be custom based on whatever you wanna do, but let's go ahead and preview what that looks like. And we can take a look. All right, so we've got sign in, sign up, and then let's view it as a logged in user, which is going to be me. All right. And now we can see that we've got all listings and update user over here on the left. This is what happened to our menu. It went over to the left. All right, so that's gonna be our homepage. Now let's talk about how to give permissions at the page level. So let's say we have a calendar page and we only want specific people to see this page. When you click into this page settings, this is where our visibility again shakes out. So who can you see this page? Logged in users or non-logged in. So all of our users are logged in and then those user groups are what apply next. So which user groups can see these? We want it to be group B and super admin. We don't want group A seeing this at all. So then we click on save. So if group B is then logged in, they're not gonna see this specific calendar, but group A would see it because of the permissions that I just set. So that's going to be how you wanna think about it. So I'm gonna go back to this page and I want you to think about as you've established those permissions, like what pages do you have? Who needs to see what information? And then apply that at the page level. And again, you can apply that at the block level as well, but I would encourage you to think about page level first, but that's how that's going to work. So when you do publish the site, you're going to actually then you can attach a custom domain to it. So in this case, let's say we're gonna call it clientportal.abcproperties.com. That would be the homepage. And that would be what people see here when they go to our homepage. And then when they log in, they would be abcproperties.com forward slash whatever the URL uh, 
slog is at the end of the page here calendar. So that's a lot in this video, but hopefully that is helpful to walk through how to use those custom objects. So many different applications, but in this case, if you are in real estate, having permissions at that level of the leasing agent, or even you could build this out so that your tenants also have specific visibility of information captured in HubSpot, maybe when their next upcoming payments do. Again, all that being built in HubSpot first and then displayed in a client specific portal with permissions accordingly for those users. For more tips, tricks, and how to's, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time.